The Little's Law is named after Professor John Little of the MIT. The Little's Law is well known and used in the field of operations management. It can be applied to a wide range of manufacturing and service operational systems. And it can also be applied in other contexts, such as the study of populations. So what exactly is the Little's Law? In simple words, it states that under steady state conditions, the average WIP is equal to the flow rate into the lead time. So let's take a system. In this system, there are entities which flow in. They spend time in the system. And then they flow out. Now, what could be a system? A system could be a processing line, a manufacturing line. It could be a service system, like, for example, an airport where people are flowing in and then they flow out at the other side when they board a, board a plane. It could be a hospital where patients are getting admitted and getting discharged. It could be a mall where customers walk into the mall and they walk out after some time. It could be a stadium where people go to watch a match and then walk out. It could be any of a large number of situations where entities go in and go out. It could even be the population of a country. People are born, they enter the system, and people die, they leave the system. So entities flow into a system, entities remain in the system for some time, and then entities flow out of the system. This is the domain of the Little's Law. So we can talk about a flow rate into the system and a flow rate out of the system uh, in steady state. When a system is in steady state, the average flow rate into the system is equal to the average flow rate out of the system. The time spent by an entity in the system is called its lead time. That's the time between the entity entering the system and the entity leaving the system. Finally, the number of entities in the system at a point of time is called the WIP. So the Little's Law essentially tells us that the average WIP is equal to the average flow rate into the average lead time given steady state conditions. Mathematically, we can write it this way. L equal to lambda into W. Well, L is the average WIP, lambda the flow rate, and W is the lead time. This can be written in these ways as well. Knowing any two parameters, we can find the third one. Now, we also know that lambda is 1 by xi. Xi refers to the cycle time. So we can, again, rewrite Little's Law as L equal to W by xi, which, when stated in words, becomes the average WIP is equal to the average lead time divided by the average cycle time. The Little's Law is relevant. It's applicable simply because in several real-life systems, which may not be under steady state at every point of time, are st at in steady state or display steady state behavior over sufficiently long time periods. This makes the Little's Law very universal in its application. Now let's look at a couple of examples to understand how Little's Law can be used. The first is that of an outpatient clinic which works 12 hours a day. On an average in this clinic, it's observed that 542 patients visit each day and seek consultation. And typically, a patient spends about 28 minutes in the clinic. So we are asked to find out how many patients are present in the clinic on average at a given point of time during the working hours. So here we can apply Little's Law, L equal to lambda into W. We are given lambda and W. Lambda is 542 over 12 hours. 12 hours is 12 into 60 minutes. So 542 divided by 12 into 60. That is the flow rate per minute, number of patients coming in per minute or going out per minute. And this, when multiplied by W, which is 28 minutes, the lead time will give us L. So L works out to about 21 patients. This means that at a given point of time, there are about 21 patients in the clinic on average. Okay, So this number is useful to us because if we are thinking about how much space to provide, how much space, how many chairs to provide for patients to sit, etc., uh, the WIP is a very relevant number. The second example is that of a bread manufacturing line. Let's assume a line produces 150 loaves of bread during an eight-hour shift. It's observed that on an average, there are 30 loaves or equivalent being processed in the line at any given time. So what is the average time it takes to produce a loaf of bread from the raw ingredients? Here too, the little slot can be applied. So here we are given 
the WIP and the flow rate, we are asked to find out the lead time. So W equal to L by lambda, WIP is 30, the flow rate is 150 by 8, 150 over 8 hours. So the lead time comes to be 1.6 hours. This means that on an average, a loaf of bread uh, takes 1.6 hours to produce from the raw material. We can, we can think of several contexts where Little's law can be applied. For example, say a large shopping mall where the flow unit is a human being, a person. Let's assume that uh, on an average, they spend about 150 minutes in the mall. It's known that there are about 560 people inside the mall on an average. So if these two numbers are correct, then the flow rates into and out of the mall would be 3.7 people per minute, approximately. Similarly, the cycle time, the time elapsed between two people, two successive people entering the mall or two successive people leaving the mall would be about 0 0.268, 0 0.27 minutes per person. Okay, the second example is that of a regional passport office. So here we can think of the passport application as the flow unit. The passport application is processed through various stages and eventually becomes a passport, a new passport. So imagine that this takes about 16 days to happen. That's the lead time or the flow time. The WIP, the number of applications under processing at any given point of time, let's say is 448. Now, given these numbers, we can think that the flow rate would be 28 applications per day, which means 28 new applications enter the passport office every day and 28 new passports are completed every day and issued to, to the citizens. The cycle time is the inverse of 28, which is 0 0.0357, so 0 0.0036 days. That's the time between two consecutive applications coming into the office or two consecutive passports being dispatched to the people. The third context is a car assembly line where the car is the flow unit. So let's assume that it takes about 76 hours on the assembly line to go from one end to the other. And there are about 380 cars on the line at a given point of time. So the average flow rate would be about five cars per hour. And the cycle time would be the inverse of that. That's about 0.2 hours or 12 minutes between consecutive cars uh, entering the assembly line or leaving the assembly line. And finally, a uh, country's population. Think of a population of a country as a system. Uh, imagine that this is a closed population where people don't come in from outside or leave from uh, inside to outside. Instead, people are born and they die. When they, when they are born, they enter the system. When they die, they leave the system. Now, if this system is in steady state, then the number of people born uh, in, a, in a given period of time, let's say per day, would be the same as the number of people who die in the system per day. Let's assume that the lifespan of a, of a person in this country is 62 years. So that's the flow time or the lead time. The WIP, number of people in the country at a given point of time, the population is 300 million. So this would mean that 24,000 people are born each day. And that many number of people also die each day in this country. 3.6 seconds is the cycle time, the inverse of 24,000. So what does that mean? It means that every 3.6 seconds, a person is born in this country. And every 3.6 seconds, a person dies in this country. Very interesting. So these are four diverse contexts in which the little slot can be applied. And I would encourage you to think of many other contexts where you can apply Little's Law and create your own examples. With this, we come to an end of this video.